Hello, my name is Fred Schulp and I'm an interpreter here at Jamestown Settlement. And this morning we're going to be talking to you about chainmail or mail armor. How it's made and a little bit of its background. So here we have male armor, or popularly known today as chainmail. Male armor appears in the 3rd century BC, so basically what we're looking at here is Iron Age armor, and it is an effective armor. In fact, at that time, it was the best armor you could get. It was lighter than bronze armor and a lot cheaper. Did it work? It worked really well. All of the weapons on the battlefield, until about the 14th century AD, this provided an excellent degree of protection. However, by the 14th century, you start seeing all kinds of weapons appearing on the battlefield that can pierce a mail coat, and thus it really fades from its effectiveness as frontline armor. One weapon in particular that makes the mail shirt obsolete as a frontline defense is the English longbow, a weapon that can send an arrow right through the mail. It's a tremendously powerful weapon, and because of weapons like this, the crossbow, the longbow, and the early firearms, plate armor evolves, something that will give you protection against these weapons. Meanwhile, is mail completely useless? No, it's got some uses. It's used by second-line troops, it's used by light cavalry. but one problem with it, if it's going to be used in the 16th century, is firearms. While a mail coat might slow down a longbow arrow, maybe enough to help you, maybe not. Gunfire is particularly wicked to a man wearing a coat of mail because, well, here we have a 75 caliber bullet. Yeah, it used to be round. This is punched through a breastplate already. But you can imagine what something with that power would do when it hits a steel mesh. Not only would it tear a hole through and go into your body, but a handful of mangled rings would go in with it as well. This is not the kind of armor you would want to be wearing when facing Spanish musketeers, for instance. But here in Virginia, the English are facing the Powhatans. And the Powhatans are using they're very effective archers. They're using stone-pointed arrows. Needles say this would be very effective for killing a man, but it is not very effective as an armor-piercing weapon. It wasn't designed to be. So here you have a form of armor, which is an effective uh, means of stopping Powhatan arrows. But one other advantage to the male. On a hot summer day, plate armor can be oppressive. But a mail coat is well ventilated. And so, on a hot summer day, wearing a coat of mail is nowhere near as oppressive. It's, I wouldn't go so far as to say comfortable, but it's not brutal. So, when we hear about the colonists using mail armor, Alexander Whitaker, an English minister, writes in 1612 and says, shirts of mail or quilted cotton coats are the best defense against them. And quite frankly, I'd be inclined to agree with him. As a modern museum, a living history museum, we needed good reproduction armor. Mail was, uh, as a popular armor with the Colos, we needed this. The problem is, in 1983, when I started working for this museum, there were only two kinds of male armor out there armor that was used for theatrical productions, which looks good on stage and looks great under theatrical lighting, but it doesn't, ex in close quarters, it, close examination, it doesn't look right, it doesn't sound right, it doesn't feel right. So the other alternative in those days was the kind of armor that reenactors, medieval reenactors were manufacturing. And this is an example of that type of armor. It's a heavy gauge wire, 
the rings have been wound onto a mandrel, cut off, and the cut ends of the rings are butted together. This actually provides robust protection, but unfortunately, it's a lot heavier than the original armor. Two, sometimes three times as heavy as the original armor would be. This isn't very good for handling then, and so we had to come up with a lighter option. So while trying to replicate the historic weight of the armor, we knew that a shirt of mail should weigh about 15 to 20 pounds based on the originals, and so we began manufacturing armor using lighter gauge wire. And while this armor has the right weight, it unfortunately has a problem. The rings are still only butted together, and this means the armor is rather on the weak side. This is a problem as well. And so, after examining some original armors, I noticed two very important features. Frequently, the armor was made out of round wire, which was then hammered flat. This dramatically improves the toughness of the armor without increasing the weight. The second thing, and this was the real challenge, was I noticed, as I had already heard, that the original armors are riveted closed. And that was quite a challenge, trying to replicate the riveted armor. Fortunately, we are able to produce our own riveted armor in-house, and we'll be sharing with you how this process is done. This is how we make the reproduction armor here on site. And we basically start off with 17th century technology. The first step is how to make the rings, how to form them. And so take a piece of iron wire and a mandrel. And place the wire through the mandrel and you begin winding the male, winding the male, male wire onto the mandrel. And now we need to get the wire, the coil off the wire or the mandrel. We'll snip that off. And now it's time to start cutting some rings. And that's the starting point for making mail. So we discussed the butted wire and why it's not a very good armor. And here you can see we've got the ring, but let's see what happens when we apply a little pressure. Well, I don't think you want your life depending on an armor that can be pulled apart with finger pressure. So how do you make it tougher? you flatten the rings. And so, a little hammer works called for. Now we have a ring which is considerably tougher, but not any heavier. And so now, the next step 
is to close the rings so that the open ends overlap slightly. And now to make it easier to rivet or pierce. Now this ring is ready to be punched. And so we overlap the ends of the rivet couple of hammer blows to make sure that everything fits properly together. Now that the ring has been overlapped, the ends are overlapped, we're now ready to move on to the next stage of piercing it or punching where it overlaps. Well here we have a ring and it's overlapped, it's ready to be punched. So with this small punch, we'll be putting a hole right through here. And so you can see a small hole's been pushed through it. That one is ready to be riveted. Let's do a few more. It's a very small hole, just a little slit, but that's enough to put the rivet through. So this ring is ready to be riveted. And here's our rivet. A small triangular wedge which will be forced into this hole and then closed. But how did we get the rivet? Well. Let me show you. The first step is to take a piece of the wire and we hammer it flat. And now we need to cut it. So we'll cut it at an angle. And now another cut. which will produce a small wedge. We'll turn it slightly. And this is ready to be placed into the link. All right. And now we're ready to start working on the mail, putting this ring into the mesh. Every ring goes through four others. And now we're ready to rivet this link closed. We'll set the point of the rivet into the hole. And this tool is forcing the rivet through the holes in the two pieces of the link. And now you can see the point of the rivet sticking up through the hole. Now we crimp this ring closed. And this ring 
has been closed and the rivet is set. And so we've started adding another row to this shirt of mail. And that is how we weave this male shirt. So, some of you are probably wondering, is that seems awfully time consuming. By my estimate, to make a whole shirt of mail would probably be about 1800 hours. So needless to say, a bit time consuming. So I don't think I'll be making any in this quick video we're doing today. But I thank you for coming to visit us here and for watching this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And by all means, we'd love to hear any comments you have or any questions. And that is mail at Jamestown.